Welcome, friends, to our special edition St. Joseph's Day, Stir the Soup. Uh, today, I'm going to be joined by one of our young priests of the diocese, Father Adam Lasky, who's currently the associate in the Rice Lake Cluster, uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church in Rice Lake, and then Birchwood, Hagen, and Doby. Uh, he's also uh, working in our canon law office up at the Chancery, so he's got split duties, and a lot of you know him from Extreme Faith Camp and and other diocesan youth ministry events over the years. Uh, we're gonna have a, a beautiful little conversation about this wonderful saint, the universal, uh, the patron saint of the universal church, St. Joseph. Happy St. Joseph's Day. Now from the Diocese of Superior, Wisconsin. All right, welcome to the show, Father Adam. Thanks, Chris. Good to be here with you. All the way down the road. <laughs> You're from St. <Saint> Joseph's <laughs> Parish. That's right. That's right. You're my most local guest yet, I think. <laughs> uh, we're about eight miles away from each other. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about our mutual friend, St. Joseph. Uh, we'll start with uh, just some, some fun uh, questions about St. Joseph, do a little St. Joseph trivia, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper on who St. Joseph has been in your life. So to start us off, do you have a favorite story about St. Joseph from the Gospels? Uh, yeah, well, I, I was in talking to the kids at St. Joe's school today about uh, St. Joseph, and I think that my favorite stories are probably like the angel, because uh, I've listened to my friend, Father Joe Stefanson talk about Joseph and he would always point out to me and he's like, well, he got up and he did, did what the angel told him. He got up and he did what the angel told him. And he'll repeat that over and again, like, so I go and I do what he tells me. So I go and I do what he tells me. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. I like that. You know, it's like, and, and Joseph doesn't say anything, you know, like, oh, don't worry. It's in the middle of the night. And your son is being you know sought after by a murderous king but but get up and go and he's like i'm <laughs> i'm not gonna make boo about that i'm just gonna get up and do it and so i i like that about how about you chris what's what's your favorite story about you you, you you totally stole mine so he does that a bunch of times right but my favorite <laughs> each of them is like mind-blowing to us right but my favorite is uh in matthew matthew's kind of the joseph gospel right luke's kind of the mary gospel and um in after jesus is born and all the crazy stuff the magi come uh in matthew 2 13 it says uh when they had departed uh the the magi behold the angel of the lord appeared to joseph like you're saying it said rise take the child and his mother and flee to egypt stay there until i tell you and then the next verse joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and went to egypt and stayed there until the Lord called him back. It's just like, man, decisive. Like he still had a choice, but he just decisively chose to follow where the Lord was leading. And I love that in leaders. Uh, so St. Joseph kind of as the leader of the Holy Family, like just boom, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite image or icon of St. Joseph? Yes, I wish I had it here with me to show you, uh, but it's Michael O'Brien's uh, icon mm. of St. Joseph. Mm. Um, it's one that I kind of bumped into. Uh, I was looking up images of St. Joseph and it just so turns out like Michael O'Brien's one of my favorite Catholic authors and uh, I love his different stories. Um, he's, he's, I recommend them to, highly to anybody who's like, you know, middle school, high school age, um, and beyond. I just, I love his writings. Well, it turns out he's also an iconographer. Mm -hmm. So most of his uh, uh, books have an image of St. Joseph or the Holy Family or some other icon that he's painted, so. That's awesome. Uh, I just encountered a new favorite image, and I know you just saw this the other day too, uh, of Mary and Joseph together. And it's just the two of them. And uh, Joseph and Mary have just slain the, this large, very large serpent, um, 
I don't think they have snakes that big in the Holy Land. Um, but it's like a great big boa constrictor sized snake. And Joseph has just chopped it in, ha in half with an ax. Uh, and he's like looking up at Mary with this delightful, charming look. And she's just gazing down at him and she's standing on, on the devil's, the serpent's head. Uh, yeah, it's, that's my new favorite. But... That's pretty awesome. Uh, how about a favorite devotion to St. Joseph? Give a prayer. Yes. I just I just learned the other day that Pope Francis has been saying the same Joseph prayer uh, for like 40 years or something. I, I don't remember which one it was, but how about you? The the <laughs> one that I love though is it's a, um, a novena prayer that I found. Uh, we prayed it at Catholic Youth Expeditions in the Diocese of Green Bay when I was on their summer staff. And I always thought, like at first I thought it was kind of like I didn't know much about Joseph, but by the end of the summer, I really appreciated that we took Joseph as our patron because like, it's hard. It's hard to live in communion community with men and women in the same spot and like be able to be striving after chastity, especially like yeah. when you're, you know, you want to spend time together. You, you are interested in one another. You're trying to grow in holiness and you notice the people around you are. Um, so I always thought that that was super fitting that we would pray that every day together during the summer. And the, one of the novena prayers just sort of like has ingrained itself in my mind. I have the little mm. sheet that I, you know, use to pray the novena, but it's just, um, just this, you know, hail Joseph, son of David, most chaste spouse of the immaculate mother of God and faithful guardian of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for us. Pray for our loved ones, cherish, accept, and protect them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. I think I pray that more than I pray the Hail Mary in a day. <laughs> 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 so uh, it's just on my heart all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. True confessions. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Chris? What's what's your Joseph prayer? Uh, well, there's there's this line, right? Ite ad, ad Joseph, like go to Joseph. Um, and I don't that just comes to me all the time. I just listening to Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year podcast, I didn't know that that actually comes from the Old Testament and Saint Joseph the Patriarch. Um, but I think of that frequently, especially in hardship or like sudden emergency that line just pops into my head, like, go to Joseph. <laughs> Obviously, go to Joseph to get to Jesus, right? But um, I just I just love that. And it, it's uh, fun to have fun little Latin <laughs> sayings, right? Ite go ad to Joseph. Like, um, it's short, it's easy, and it's it's powerful. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm just really starting to come to realize what a powerful intercessor he is. And I think uh, mm -hmm. we're in the year of St. Joseph, right? And I think the reason that P Pope Francis sprung that on us, normally when there's a year like that, he gives, the Pope will give months of notice. Uh, but it was literally like the day before or something. I don't remember the timing that he's like, okay, bishops of the world, this is the year of St. Joseph starting now. <laughs> and everyone's like, what? But I think he <laughs> just was realizing like what, what dire circumstances the world is in. Uh, with the pandemic, obviously, uh, primarily, but just tension, political tension, unrest all over the world, and uh, ite, ite, <laughs> go to Joseph. Uh, it seems like a, a model, a model for our time. A devotion I just discovered, and I don't know if it's new, mm. is the, um, the United States Council of Catholic Bishops put out a novena specifically for adoption um, mm. to St. Joseph leading up to uh, his feast day on the 19th, which is when this will be going live. Uh, it's St. Patrick's Day today, thus my green tie. Uh, but <clears throat> being an adoptive... Do you see I wore my green shirt? <laughs> yeah, nah. it, looks, it looks green to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm colorblind. Uh, but <laughs> this, novena, <laughs> this novena has been so beautiful. Just uh, each day is for like a, a different uh, participant in an adoption situation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. children of adoption, adoptive parents, birth parents, uh, Last question to get us started. Can you tell us about uh, a favorite pilgrimage? And I don't have one. Uh, I've never done a Joseph pilgrimage before, but uh, tell us about your pilgrimage. Uh, so I was a zealous seminarian uh, in, I think I was in my first year 
of theology at the St. Paul Seminary. Um, a friend of mine was a seminarian um, on a pastoral year down in Joliet, Illinois, Matt Malachy. And uh, Mr. Matt has worked as a parish uh, um, youth minister and done a lot of things now since he's discerned out of the seminary and uh, Theo Hano. So the three of us uh, jumped into, uh, what was it, the Honda Accord? No, we took, we took Mr. Matt's orange uh, Chevy something. Anyway, we, we threw everybody all there in together and we cracked up an idea to go uh, during our spring break to make a St. Joseph's pilgrimage. And this was just yep. something that, that Matt had brought up a couple of times. And I had heard of the oratory of St. Mm -hmm. Joseph in Montreal, but I never got a chance to go up there. So I was mm -hmm. learning a lot about the story and, and the story is something like this. St. Andre Bissette, yeah. um, you know, before he was a well-known saint, was just a humble priest. He was a member of the uh, community of the priests of the Holy Cross there. And so he was uh, living on the property of, of the Holy Cross Fathers. He started to kind of build a, a small uh, devotion to St. Joseph in that area, which involved the small chapel. And uh, he brought a, a little oil lamp to burn in front of the chapel or the image of St. Joseph. And eventually that votive lamp, um, he would just dip his finger in it and um, pray over people when they would come in and they'd say, Father, we were having a hard time conceiving or we're, we're not, you know, doing, we're not, things aren't going well in the family or whatever it is. Like we just need prayers. We need prayers for healing. And he would pray and anoint people with this oil and ask for St. Joseph's intercession. Well, it turns out more and more miracles started happening through his intercession. And over time, uh, kind of at, at the time that he died, they had just raised the substantial amount of funds that they needed to consider constructing kind of on Mount Royal, Montreal, the an oratory which would overlook the whole city and would be sort of the iconic place to go to, to mass in the city alongside being a, a place of prayer in honor of St. Joseph. So mm -hmm. uh, I took my handy dandy notebook and duct taped a picture of St. Joseph on it and asked people, you know, in my teaching parish in Somerset and other places, what, you know, what they needed prayers for. So I took a book full of prayers in uh, to St. Joseph and we prayed the novena on our way, actually the same one that I have that's folded up in a little piece of paper. And um, we were praying for these, you know, different things to St. Joseph. Well, we got there and, uh, you know, a couple of things happened. We were able to pray and spend like most of the day in prayer at the, at the shrine. And we, we probably went a couple of times, you know, to mass there throughout the, a couple of days. Um, and having done that, uh, we, we all each got a small bottle of the, the oil that, you know, mm. burns in front of the, the image of St. Joseph. So I took all this back. And I had it all packed up in my backpack, sort of all into one. And as sort of like, you know, it's it's the frustrating moment, but also kind of in, in some ways a culmination of the whole experience. I, I threw all my stuff in the backpack. And as we're going back, you know, I pull it out just as we are stopping at the last place on the way home. And the oil had spilled out all over my bag and literally anointed the prayer book the little novena sheet and like a bunch of other stuff that I had all over my bag. So like the, the, the bottle was wasted, right? But it was kind of a cool answer to prayers. Like yeah. every single petition in the book was anointed with the oil. Every, my, my little novena sheet, it's, I still have it. It looks like it, you know, got dropped into a fat fryer or something like that. So <laughs> I feel like St. Joseph blessed and answered those right. prayers in unique ways. So right. that's he my, drew, that's my pilgrimage story. That's awesome. He, he drenched them <laughs> with his intercession, right? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. So we're off to a great start. Let's do a little St. Joseph trivia. Are you ready? Ooh, I feel like this is going to crush me, but okay. <laughs> no, 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 this is good. Uh, so we'll, we'll start off with maybe the easier bit. Uh, St. Joseph, I think, is pretty well known for all of his amazing titles. So uh, I found a, a really fun article on the Focus uh, Fellowship of Catholic University Students website of some of their favorite titles. I think there are 16 of them. Uh, but let's test your knowledge. What are, what are some of the Joseph titles that you can think of and that you enjoy? Okay, are we going after 16? Sure. There's <laughs> okay. more than that. There's more than that. This is just their favorite. Okay. 
foster father of the redeemer yep head of the holy family yep spouse of the virgin yep mirror of justice yeah that's a good one mirror of patience yep uh model of chastity yep protector of virgins chase protector of the virgin okay <clears throat> go ahead uh, <laughs> terror of demons there it is <laughs> that's that's the grand prize winner right there <laughs> <laughs> um okay that's that's i that's my best shot all right i'll i'll tally off the rest so we got saint joseph the worker which is pretty manly like he's the worker like the guy yeah. that, that gets it done uh husband of mary foster father of jesus you mentioned patron of the dying uh yes. patron of the universal church universal church of yep. course patron of fathers patron of travelers and patron of immigrants with the flight to Egypt. Uh, these two are, are pretty fun ones. Illustrious son of David. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, it's through through uh, Joseph's side that Jesus is the son of David, right? Uh, splendor of patriarchs. A pretty great one. That one has a pretty epic image on it. <laughs> uh, chaste protector of the virgin. Zealous defender of the Christ. Wow. Uh, mirror mirror of patience you got most obedient and then last but not least terror of demons so well done well done those are mostly come from the the litany of saint joseph but uh thanks Chris. all right yeah absolutely second round of trivia and i've only got two here uh, okay this is the more soup question so how many parishes in the soup do you think are named saint joseph Four? Oh, man. Uh, there are seven. Seven? Wow. Yeah, I, I think Joseph is the most common saint name for parishes, at least in the U.S. that I've, that would be, that would be my guess. Maybe there's, uh, maybe Mary, like versions of Mary, but. Uh, Rice let's Lake, I, Shell Lake. Let's see if we can get them all. Rice Lake, Shell Lake, go ahead. Amory. Mm-hmm. Is there one in, uh, it's on the Eastern side of the diocese. Curiously, there are no St. Joseph's on the Eastern half of the diocese. They're all in the Western half of the diocese. Wow. Yeah. So it's, so it's Amory, Rice Lake, Shell Lake. Yep. Hayward. Of course. I missed that one in my mind. Yep. Osceola. Ah, yeah. Uh, did we say Barron? Nope. Nope, Baron and uh, Lapointe, I believe, is Saint Joseph. Let me oh, the my list. Mission Chapel. Yeah, Saint Joseph uh, on Lapointe. Yep, which I think is the oldest parish in the diocese. But it is. Yeah, it was founded on by, by Bishop Baraga, right, like many hundreds of years ago, which is awesome. <laughs> Very good. Uh, all right, that's the. Do, do you have any soup or any Joseph trivia questions for me? I didn't prep you at all. Feel free to, to stump the heck out of me since mine were kind of tough. <laughs> I don't, I can't think of any. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to think of other saints named St. Joseph and I was really struggling. I know there's a bunch. Uh, I kept coming back to St. Josephine, Bakita, uh, who's a, mm -hmm. a favorite of mine. She's awesome. But All right, very good. Um, so round three will be more of our uh, diving deeper with St. Joseph. Um, so would you just share kind of your Joseph testimony? When did you first hear, obviously you've probably known about St. Joseph since you were a little boy, but when did he become like a thing for you and, and what has that looked like? Uh, well, Joseph and I have a deep bond ever since the Christmas pageant of my uh, <laughs> boyhood where, where <laughs> because I was snarky and in the Christmas choir at, at Holy Trinity, um, I got punished by getting put in the Christmas play as Joseph. <laughs> so, so myself and 
one of the local girls uh, played Mary and Joseph. And I think we had a live baby for the Christmas pageant. So it was wow. like a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I never really connected with Joseph during that though. I just thought it was cool to, to be able to do something in the Christmas play. I didn't really yeah. think about him until, uh, yeah, when I was in college seminary, um, I had a day when uh, there was like a day of recollection or just, you know, it was a retreat day. Somebody came to the seminary, they were giving a couple of talks and we got some time for prayer. Well, it just so happened to be that, that like this um, mother Adela came and spoke to us. And I don't know which community she's from. I, I haven't had a chance to really look her up since then, but she came and talked to us about Joseph and I was really uh, like, I had my eyes open because she talked mm -hmm. about like, hey, if you ever have felt insecure, if you've ever felt like your own father isn't going to be able to provide for you, like if you've ever felt like, uh, you know, you just don't have the protection that you want in this world, like you should really talk to Joseph about those things. And her, you know, emphasis was go to Joseph, go to Joseph mm -hmm. and uh, with what's on your heart. And then then we all got time to just sort of practice it. So it was like, I was walking the streets of St. Paul talking to St. Joseph. And I, I guess I had a lot to say because it really impacted me. And I think a lot, you know, maybe to some degree because I had lost my father like a couple of years before, but I have ever since then, like just talked a lot to Joseph about everything, particularly in the struggle of with purity um, you know, in, in loving those around me in like my uncertainties in my insecurities, like a lot of the times I'll just be in, prompted to like, I don't ask Joseph, ask him for help, you know, and he's mm -hmm. just sort of there with me a lot on the day to day. So, uh, yeah. How about you, Chris? What's um, your Joseph story? You know, I, I have a couple. One is that when I was in graduate school, there was a priest um, that was just an amazing confessor. And so the, when he would have his normal office hours, he was a literature professor. Uh, people would just line up in the hallway to go to confession with him. He's a really sim simple and humble man. Um, but you would have this beautiful, profound uh, confession experience with him. And then he'd go, all right, come over so I can anoint you with this Joseph oil. <laughs> and I had no idea what Joseph oil was. I had converted... Um, gosh, maybe two years before that, and was like striving to be deeply Catholic, uh, but I had never heard of that before. I certainly didn't know the St. Andre Bassett connection and, and all of that. Um, but I just remember thinking like, well, Father Robert's really, really great and really holy. So this, this must be a great thing. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the deeper connection that I've had with him has been, um, our oldest son, John Paul, as you know, is adopted. And through, <clears throat> through kind of discerning adoption, I, St. Joseph became more real to me a little bit. Hmm. Um, hmm. And so I wish this novena had been something that existed if it didn't, or at least that I'd known about beforehand. Um, Cause I think that would have been a, a really cool thing to be doing um, throughout our adoption journey, preparing to embark on that but then throughout the, the months and months of waiting and and everything um but i think he was just kind of a role model for me in being an adoptive father um our next two children are biological and um and at first he was like show me what this even looks like like you jesus was your son like you didn't beget him <laughs> uh but jesus is part of the line of david through you like that's huge and um so I think I kind of really turned to him for the first time um but also then when we had biological children I think that his influence continued just in that my my children are not my own um even the children that I've begotten like the Lord has entrusted them to me and to my fatherhood uh and Joseph's example of just incredible humility but also that leadership that I talked about um, from the flight to Egypt and just whatever the Lord asks of him vis-a-vis -vis this child, he just does. Um, and that's something that I very imperfectly <laughs> am striving to do with my children too. So he's, he's just incredible. Um, the more 
I learn about all of the saints, the more I'm struck by how little so many of them said. <laughs> like my great heroes is John Paul II, uh, who we have like more recorded words from him than maybe anybody in history. But there's, <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> there's so many amazing saints like St. Joseph, who we, we literally know next to nothing of what he said, right? But all we know are these heroic deeds of simple trust and, and um, faithful obedience. So what a model uh, for us as men in our different vocations, which is, is so great. Uh, so lastly, to wrap up, are there any recommendations that you would have for people watching on how they can eat, how they can go to Joseph? Hmm. Uh, well, I think, I think first and foremost, just you know, to practice it in prayer like if you've never uh, maybe connected well with your father or even if you have you might have like some of the imperfections in the relationship and like to go to joseph in those places you know to go to joseph as he's the he's the terror of demons so if you're really struggling with temptation and you just are kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired you know the the, the cycle of temptation like saint joseph is another person to just sort of invoke in the midst of that um equally he's he knows how to order relationship right mm -hmm. so like if your relationships maybe your your dating relationship your your um spousal relationship just isn't what you would want it to be like he's he wants to protect what's holy he wants to protect the seed of christ you know sort of bearing fruit in your family and in your home and uh he's he's gonna walk through that with you and be a protector so um he's also you know he's prudent i mean he acts at the right time and he does what he should uh and there's i don't know you know if, if you're anything like me you know sometimes i agonize over the right decision or about like whether or not i'm, I'm making a good decision about certain things and you know, the best thing that we can sometimes do to be freed is just to like ask Joseph to help us decide and then don't waffle, you know, like to, to do it and to, to not step back, you know, like he, he went to Egypt. Um, he, he does this in obedience. So that's, that's some of the things I can think of. How about you, Chris? Uh, yeah, I think, um, just the, the simple act of, of, speaking to him like the the name of jesus obviously is incredibly powerful um and if you're not accustomed to just saying the name of jesus in difficult moments and in good moments um start there <laughs> but i think if we're talking about developing a joseph a devotion to saint joseph it's like you said like you say that prayer more often than than maybe you do hail mary it's like it, that's how you build a friendship with a saint, right? And that's such a beautiful image to me. One of my other professors in graduate school had this profound devotion and friendship really with St. Thomas More. Um, and he just talked to him all the time. Like that sounds super weird to us, right? But throughout the course of the day, just be like, all right, Thomas, pray for me. I'm gonna go do this, feeling insecure about this or help me to, to receive the Holy Spirit's guidance as I deliver this lecture or whatever he was gonna do that day. Um, and I think just make a habit of it. Like habits can be good. <laughs> so uh, if it's <clears throat> leaving the house every day, Joseph, give me the strength to be a, a courageous man like you. Whatever it is, habits can can really help build a relationship. So that would be my advice. And that and and read about him. Like his his uh, his story is incredible. The beginning of Matthew, uh, especially chapter two. Uh, maybe skip the genealogy if you've are going to get bogged down in that in chapter one, but uh, just read about him. Like his, his decisiveness is a great example for us today. Cause I think our generation is like the generation of wafflers. <laughs> like, we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I don't know. I don't know. Discern, 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 right? It's like, no, just make a decision. Be like Joseph. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Well, that's all we have time for today. Happy Feast of St. Joseph to you, Father. Same to you, Chris. Thank you. And we'll see everybody next time on the next Stir the Soup. God bless. Stir the soup. Stir the soup. <laughs>